Hey, this is Dave from Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole, and you're listening to an episode where we talk about the flat Earth reality. Tim says he believes in aliens. You are now checked in to Stand Up New York Labs. Oh, yeah. Knights of the Golden Circle. Princess Diana was murdered. JFK was assassinated by our own government. Marilyn was poisoned, 9-11 was staged, total dang, total doodly doodly a deep inside the rabbit hole. Deep inside the rabbit hole. Welcome, meine Freunde, to another episode of Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole. I'm one of your hosts, Mike Cannon. Uh, sorry, I just did that to make Tim feel comfortable, Dave. He is of German descent. Oh, Rothschild. Well, let's all right. Let's talk about that. Uh, <laughs> a lot of healing work around that. I was not allowed to learn German growing up in my household. Is that right? Yeah, because they just wanted to limit me. Limit but, you in what way? Like well, they, they wanted? Want, uh, they maybe they wanted the ability to talk behind your back. Oh yeah, yeah. Big theme. <laughs> big theme. Hiddenness is a big overall quality. They're like like we're, I can we're gonna... feel, I can feel every cell in my body right now just from you bringing that up, burning with revolution. <laughs> and you wonder why I'm going after the United Nations, Mom. <laughs> uh, is it something that she goes, now you're, you're going to need bodyguards soon? I'm like Tim. All I'm of like, the oh, okay, all of the debt of the nation is owed to you. Together, she's going down. I saw it. All of the debt of the nation is owed to you. You should just embrace it. I'm the black sheep, bro. <laughs> are you? Uh, so, are you rectifying the situation? Are you learning German? No, I'm not learning. Actually, I just uh, <laughs> <laughs> I might. You know, I don't have the time right now. All right. Anyway, Dave, how you doing, man? Uh, we're doing good. A week has passed since our last show, so we're we're taping this a week in the future. Um, I'm betting we're not even here. I, I didn't <laughs> no, even. I'm kidding. I didn't even notice your shirt. Did you see your shirt? Yeah, you know, yeah for I, sure. I'm wearing my uh, sure. flat Earth shirt. It's got a big flat Earth on it. it says flat Earth. I wore this. Uh, I wore this <laughs> it down. It says flat Earth. It says flat Earth. I wore this down at the beach. It was a very nice day. There's tons of people. Uh-huh. Guess what happened? Uh, they all kind of scraggs. Not, not a fucking thing. No. No one even yeah. no one even looked at you it. You probably were wearing the flat Earth shirt with your <laughs> with your hair the way it was before. What did you look like, Jack Nicholson? Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, just my, busting through the ice wall. I'm here. Want, want to know how I got these scars? <laughs> my father was a drinker. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> Tim, you had a story you wanted to tell? Uh, I don't know. Did I? You did. You wanted to say something about Mars? Oh yeah, I did. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I'm like. Well, I, right before this show started, I was like, hey, Dave, I'm on your side with something. I'm coming out strong right now. I am convinced that we're, we've are we been on Mars for a really long time. Right? Uh-huh. And he goes, you think you're on my side? He's like, Mars isn't even real. And I was just like, <laughs> Mars is a sentient being, Tim. It's not a planet. You know like, it. Look at you. <laughs> I'm like, oh, man, I'm just you know choking on your dust, Dave. Dave doesn't even realize I've studied his moves I to love the it. point that like, I love but it. it's a scouting report, Dave. Yeah, it's all right. I'm fine with that. <laughs> I know. When you're gonna the go low are, and outside, these seeds are, the seeds are planted in your subconscious, and when the real stuff happens, you go, "Like I knew that the whole time." I'm friends with Dave Weiss. The phenomenon <laughs> is, yeah, please, flat. everybody, take me to your leader. Take me to Dave. Dave goes thumbs down immediately. I get eaten by tigers. <laughs> <laughs> you just misheard. That would be it. really funny. You'll see the humor in that, though, right? <laughs> yeah, As of a comedian, you'll be like, like right. "That was a good move." It was kind that of was the a best way move. to go out. <laughs> <laughs> At least I stuck to my guns. <laughs> For me, it's not about the flat earth phenomenon. It's about the David Weiss phenomenon and how he's getting in the ear of everybody. Well, he's the Illuminati of conspiracy. Yeah, that's, yeah. It's, that's, that's what I like to watch. Like everyone thinks that the, the flat earth is just the surface level. That's the, like the five senses, skin physical reality yeah. that's going on. But what's really going on is David Weiss was born. No, that's, I agree. That's, what was, that's what's John, really John going on. John has some real concerns. <laughs> <laughs> Last week he was just like, Dave seems to be kind of vacuuming in power from all of this, doesn't he? <laughs> he's getting like, support. Dude, Dave's fingertips are sucking up the energy. He's like a weeping willow of spirituality. I, 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 <laughs> He's just sapping us dry. Dude, I'm, positive, I'm, I'm positive on Halloween he had the gourds with human fat burning <laughs> out front. And he was just bringing in that sixth dimensional energy. <laughs> bringing it in. I don't disagree. I had the puking pumpkins, that's it, though. <laughs> Without a doubt. So here's here's why I think that there's humans on Mars. Oh. Um, yeah, God, Dave, <laughs> this is way out there. 
So uh, Anthony Patch, which I don't, I don't understand why, how you can disagree with this. When I'm after gonna, I told ahead. you I listened to the interview, no, listen. you were like, I sent that to you. I know. I used to, I, I was right there with Couple you, but minutes. then I woke up to what's really going on. I, be, I believed in the flat earth um, be, before I realized that, Na- that we never went to the moon and that NASA's a joke and nothing's in space. I, I mean... And then when you when you look and observe, you know, time lapse videos, we don't have we can't do time lapse with our eyes, but we have now iPhones and stuff that do time lapse video. You can actually see the movements of the sun and the moon and the and the planets, which are the wandering stars and the star gods. Give us that. Give us yeah, that. No, but <laughs> yeah, I want to hear. Give that. us everything. the wandering. This sounds so, poetic. Yeah, I wanna... So, so you know, the the ancients called uh, planets wandering stars. You know, and uh, if you look at a planet, who did the that back in the olden Those days? Guys, you know, back, how, uh, how old? Uh, you know, back the Egyptians. You know, back back, back, the back, Egyptians. At, back in the time of the Egyptians. So what year is that? Like? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. The, I don't know the years. Right? I don't know the years. Tim. Yeah, I'm just checking. Just yeah, checking. yeah, it's all right. All right. So, so if, when you look up at the sky, what do you see? What's the difference between a planet and a star? Not much. You really can't tell much. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Big difference, but go on. Uh, well, no, don't go on. What the, are the differences? Yeah, what, do you, what do you see the difference? <laughs> no, 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 I don't, what do I see the difference? Yeah. Well, for example, uh, Mercury, Venus, Mars, they're mm-hmm. all compl- different, total different compositions. Yeah, they look different. They're, 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 yeah. they're lit up. So they're, they're, are they reflecting sunlight or are they self-illuminating? Well, if it's matter, it's, it's, reflecting, it's reflecting light. That's so why the nature they, what, of it. So the, the different compositions of those planets reflect the light differently. Because they're different chemicals. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And, yeah, and the yeah. moon is reflecting the, the white cold light versus it being shined on by a yellow warm light. <laughs> I but, don't know what you're talking based, about. Based on its surface, couldn't that be how it reacts to light? Well, do you look at the surface? It looks like brown dirt. I mean, I, I don't ever see brown dirt you know, no, know reflecting light that way. Way. Well, sometimes maybe it's a black light. <laughs> how do we get on the? How do we, <laughs> so what, how do we get on the moon? I was just saying that the su- the suns and stars seem to be built of different things than planets. Yeah, well, I don't think that's so far. You I, haven't told me how they're the same. So, so when you look at it, when you look at it with the naked eye, they kind of look the same. They look, just look like lights in the sky. You know, when you look at different stars, they have different colors to them. There's red stars, there's yellow stars, there's you know, there's blue light coming from these stars. They're all different lights in the sky, and the. When you look at them through a telescope, and I've had uh, access to a high-powered observatory, and I looked at Saturn and uh, and and Venus, and uh, when you zoom in on these things, they don't really they they look like they're sparkling. They they look like like almost disco balls with all the different like lights a coming off them. Character and in they the look they look self-illuminating. And the only reason that people think of them as planets, like planet Earth, is because of all of the pictures that NASA showed us, and we have proof that NASA lies and uses Photoshop and 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 everything else. But other scientists that work independently of NASA has have confirmed this information. Have confirmed what? What have they that seen? They are, that they're planets. They've no. seen the same thing. No, they haven't. They they, no, they for, but hang on they're, for sure there are other individual scientists that have said the exact same thing as officially sanctioned NASA scientists. So uh, when I look at Saturn through a high-powered telescope, um, with my programming, I'm like, that's a ball with rings around it. That's what I see. I'm not necessarily saying it's not a ball-shaped um um, whatever it is, but I'm not. Uh, but it's not the distance that they're telling us. It's close. The sun is only at most a couple thousand miles away. It, it, you know, with with trigonometry, you can see you can prove that the, the distance to the sun. Um, and, and if you watch <laughs> it, well, I, I did. I did. I went on a rant two shows ago about the platonic solids and me- measuring the orbits within them. You do. You can yeah. very easily uh, do that. But I have a question for you, though, sure. Dave. You know, just thinking about fractal nature. I'm not. I'm not. I, I, was, what sent, you're I was sent a uh, mathematical proof that actually just disproves that entire sentence. Yeah. But whatever. You know, it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't matter to me anyway. It's like. So, so, so no, hold on. No, so um, human beings, they have an inner sun as well. I can see auric fields. There's a light that's coming out of them, but uh, but it's from receiving and reflecting the light at the same time. That's the nature of reality. The physical dimension has no light of its own. By its very nature, it has no light of its own. So everything that's here, that's perfectly imperfect in its own unique way, shimmers and glitters with its imperfection from light from higher dimensions. And we receive it 
and reflected. It's always both because it's non reality is non dual. So the main science back in the day was astrology, and astrology was the science sure. and, until the Freemason the Satanists came in and <laughs> said uh, um, that uh, that uh, astronomy is the new science, and uh, that's a very limited um, science based on basic numbers, time space only. Yeah, instead of uh, vortex uh, vortex mathematics and uh, and sacred geometry, they're using the limited the limited uh, geometry <laughs> that they teach in school. I'm down. That has nothing to it, you know. Tesla and Edley Scallon, who built Coral Castle, they knew about vortex uh, mathematics and sacred geometry, and they were sure. where they knew the, the secrets to how they built the pyramids. So, Res Resonance Foundation, Nassim Haramein, yeah, yeah. Susan Cornegy. So, so all of that is, is um, that that's what they're hiding from us. And when you look up into the sky and you see the planets and you see the stars and you see the International Space Station, which I saw twice a couple weeks ago, came by two days in a row, mm. um, it, that. It, what I see is a bright light, a very bright light. I don't see an International Space Station, which is about the size of a jumbo jet. Um, when a jumbo jet's flying at five miles at cruising altitude, it's a tiny little dot, and this thing is 25 times farther, and we can see it clearly bright as day. It's a, it's it's just another light in the sky. So getting back to yeah. astrology, you know, I never— And eventually I, I, we'll get back to the wandering planets yeah, question. Well, no, the, the wandering planets and, and astrology, this is where it all comes. Okay. Um, I, I always <gasps> laughed at, you know— uh, the position of the planets, these big rocks in space, how does that affect your life? But what if these lights in the sky that we see are, are sentient beings or are gods, for lack of a better word, um, that are affecting everything around us? They are orbiting over our flat earth and their positions and their movements affect our lives profoundly. Pythagoras calls it the music of the right. spheres. It's and, the water and, swim in the fish. Right. So the stars move at their pace. The wandering stars, the planets move at a slightly quicker pace, the International Space Station light that we see and all the other tiny lights that are up at the same height and much smaller, but we can still see them somehow, um, that we call satellites are other smaller factions of it. And even uh, the uh, the um, the asteroid, uh, the, the, the meteor showers that we have, like the Perseus meteor shower that always shows up on June 21st, how the fuck does that happen if we're corkscrewing through space? How do we always come back to that same spot? We're never back it's in that same, the same spot. It's not in the same spot. All things are in relationship right. with each other. So, so it's the same reason why you keep getting back together with that girlfriend who keeps pissing you off, man. You're circling each other. <laughs> it's an addiction. And then she gets the flu some shot and you dump of, her. So, <laughs> some things happen. You'll be back. So, so my, my, uh, my. But that, what I just said is like a really important thing to, to keep in mind. I, I, I get it. What I'm saying is we are, we are um, programmed to believe that these are big rocks in space, and they're not. I believe that they're energetic, sentient beings that are traveling and have a, have a hell of a lot to do with our reality. Perhaps there, each each star is a soul, and that's where we go when we leave this meat body. All right? Uh, yeah, I, I'm with you that everything's alive and these things can be sentient beings, but I still don't understand how that makes us not able to go to Mars. Because Mars is just a light. It's not, it's an energy source. What it, about Earth? Earth is a flat plane Earth where we live on. Earth, again, is so completely unique and different. It's well, just the only Earth, thing in Earth, reality that's different. No, no, that's not true. Like, if you go into the woods when you go camping, are you a tree? There's lots of trees out there, so you must be a tree, right? Well, holographically, I, I operate under the same <laughs> mechanics, but, but no, I, I'm not well, a tree. holographically, the flat Earth is a globe. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, I don't see any other... Holographically, I can't see it. I mean, Dr. Richard Allen Miller, uh, he did uh, dance around this question on the latest John B. Wells yep. when he was on it. And John B. Wells kept going on a rant, kept being like these fucking flat earthers or whatever. And Dr. Richard Allen Miller was like, you know what? I don't know. He's like, I don't claim to know. I'm not going to know. And then he dropped a couple really deep things about mysticism and the Sefer Yetzirah and how we create a reality that's a mirror. And he basically, he was explaining what I'm trying to explain also when I say, I think Dave is uh, misinterpreting like two-dimensional mathematics and not seeing that it's like a, ho a spinning holographic mathematics actually. There's like, there's something, there's something wrong with the, the, the logical thinking, but I also hold the door open to you being uh, right. Uh, I do. That's but, insane. Uh, you know. <laughs> You know, maybe I will go on that flight with you. I have, yeah, I've, I'm, in. I want to I'm in. I just decided. <laughs> yeah, I'm in. Down together, yeah, who gives a shit? We'll each be wearing our T-shirts. <laughs> yeah. Decaying Frank. <laughs> That's the yeah, number I have, one I seller. Have no, I have no counter argument because yeah. it's mo it sounds mostly like a belief, which is fine. I have no, it, well, it, no problem it, with it, that. It, you know what? And it's, I haven't. I can't prove it right now, but it sure makes a lot more sense with the physical evidence that we can see. I mean, there's there's a uh, I have a video with the time lapse of the sun coming right across the Earth and arcing away like a left-hand bowler through a bowling ball. 
and it's a it's a straight line, uh, you know, level over the plan uh, over the plane, and it curves away and disappears past the point of uh, the vanishing point, the point gotta, of convergence. You got to write your book, though, dude. Yeah, That's what I'll, you got to do. I'm working on it. Because it this is a religion. You got to. It's going to become flat Earth religion, and you are the new L. Ron Hubbard. You, you know what? And I'm with not, Tim as your Miscavige, are you kidding? This is going to be I'm insane. Like, listen, I'm not saying he's right. I'm not saying he's wrong. I'll be we your, I'll be your ce- celebrity headpiece that you know I, I could be seen on like Bethany. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff like that. You guys just have a yeah. lower powered. So, <laughs> hey, so here's Mike on a stationary bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in though. So cool. this is it. We're deep in the black hole of flat Earth again. I can't believe it. I don't know why why it, this happens. It's a it's a thing. But yeah. even even in that uh, description, which was lovely. Um, it still differentiated planets from stars because you were saying that they were moving quicker, well, and you were also saying that they're not necessarily they're sentient. Mo- they're, they're moving at different speeds, and they may, maybe have different functions, or, or their speed and shape and size are the functions. You know, they, they talk about the returning of the sky gods. Well, you know, why are all the planets named who talks, after who, gods? No, who talks about the returning <laughs> of the sky gods? The, 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 Bible, <laughs> I think, I, the Bible has it. talks about the, the gods that came from the heavens. and The heavens? Yeah, the heavens. Not the sky. And you got to stop it interpreting this literally <laughs> so remember you you referenced tesla yeah. frequency and vibration man right. it all exists right here because you're living in a hologram it's not coming from above man that's the illusion yeah that's when you're wrong there is no above <laughs> yeah bro above same as below come on son you're in the third thing there, right in the middle. Uh, there's a there's just a lot of questions out there, and uh, and uh, and the evidence is is you know you, you, I'm on your side, man. I just we know wanna... everything we know about planets, you know, and the and the, you know we're all this are all coming from NASA, and we have unbel- un there's so many proofs that NASA lies. All you know now with people that have uh, uh, photo analyzing software, you can see that they cut and paste the shit. Saturn used to have all these rings on it, and now they're all gone. But you know, who except took the outer the rings? rings. Who right. took, what? <laughs> somebody, somebody went what to Jared. Senti- no. One of those floating sentient. <laughs> 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 yeah, that you know. was too good. Real quick, what about the people, because we've gotten commenters <laughs> before. One of those be... gods went to Jared. <laughs> yeah. The gods are returning and they took our rings. <laughs> and you know those Lord rings are rings. flat. Um, so either way, um, what about the people, they, they comment. Uh, on our uh, on our stuff that they're like but nasa isn't the only space expedition like company <laughs> other people do this they're yeah, independent no, well, researchers yeah, like china all over our country so let's talk about spacex spacex was ten- sen- sending several tons of cargo up to the space station and it blew up right on camera and when it blew up it vaporized the entire thing was gone there wasn't big chunks falling out of the sky it was just gone and uh, what the fuck happened to it? Was that a malfunction, or did they do that on purpose just to say, oh, you're not going into space. You know, only NASA goes into space. Was that the plane Lance Bass was supposed to be on? I don't know. He don't was know. supposed to be on the original <laughs> expedition. I'm so, really glad he didn't. So and that, I think, was that unmanned? I think it was unmanned. Oh, maybe. I think it was unmanned. But um, I believe that all of the rockets that we see that launch, you know, supposedly satellites and people, they go up, they curve over, and even uh, NASA has 10 different videos filming them, and they all shut off before it's completely out of sight. And then I believe they just vaporize it. They fucking hit it with, uh, it's designed to turn into dust, or they hit it with a directed energy weapon, and it's gone. They're like, oh, now it's in space. Oh, look, here it is, docking with the Soyuz. And they, they show this video that's obviously filmed. <laughs> in a pool because bubbles are floating up but, and, and people believe it. But even beyond space ex- expedition, even the stuff we were speaking about before, like the planets, like stuff like that, just general research into what the fuck is going on in the sky. It's all speculation. They have no proof. No, they never fine, proved but any just, of it. But I'm just saying that that's not just NASA. So like, it, it, while a lot of people agree with you that NASA is completely corrupt and I'm assuming they are considering they're the official, you know, right. the, the space league, but there are other people that agree with them fundamentally well they're they're all doing it on on lifelong programming or program with the globe from the day we're fucking born but they're v smart man they're they're smarter than us and you know what the more educated is the more indoctrinated dude do you know a fucking insane pastor said the exact same thing about an overzealous kid that was one of those like too smart for his own good. Oh, he beat him so up. I told him, I said, you bet you, I grabbed him and I, I fucking hauled off and I punched this kid right in the stomach. I mean, he was asking for it. Is that what you're going to do? Eventually, uh, I'm, Dave's going to get there. to the point where he's going to uppercut a child for believing the world is round. <laughs> you know, the, 
there there's a uh, there's a bunch of um b- bunch of research people out there that have put up uh you know five thousand dollar rewards or whatever for any proof that the earth is a ball no one's been able to claim it yet you know but they you know a, a sport of the show i was debating him the other day via text and he was explaining to me after showing me a james von Prague clip of him just absolutely bombing on live tv and i keep saying that he's colored in purple and everything so i'm like i right. know he's spiritual i know he's spiritual though he really is covered in purple but this was a really uncomfortable youtube video of him just what was he, he, he looked like a hack basically right. like in, in on a, just a live tv show trying to be a psychic you know but um i don't know what, what was my point what were we just talking about damn it the, uh, it? the indoctrinated the more educated the more dangerous you are i don't know it'll come back to me but basically what are you gonna do so so, not- so, one other thing i didn't want to forget though nasa cut its live feed recently when a glowing orb came up to it programming right? just well, to, you know get people's imaginations oh my god they cut it off there's aliens coming there's so much alien propaganda coming in with movies with a stunt like that you know you want people to it's always been they around, want though, people right? to be but but they're ramping it up they're ramping it up i mean if there was <clears> this much around 10 years ago everybody would be freaking out no, but because they, vampires were in them though. Yeah. like that's but, what happens but it's they, cyclical the, 10 years ago they had one or two a year maybe and then you know then it's five a year now it's like fucking five a week and everyone's like eh, all right we're used to this you know and then soon they're gonna claim that aliens have landed uh, you know they're here at the white house and it's probably some fucking genetic research and cloning that, 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 shit so, they, they've done underground to they're gonna bring somebody up and like look this is an alien he's here and no one's gonna fucking know the difference because they fucking breed bred him from a pig and uh in then something else so i remember what i was gonna say you, <laughs> you, said that, you know we're offering five thousand dollars or yeah. something to these people or whatever well you know there was a guy uh who was offering like a million dollars to anybody that could prove that he was psychic or something like that you know yeah. what happens is when you start to engage in these sort of you have to prove it type experiments yeah what, the reason why we're debating it we don't understand it in the first place is because there are dimensions to it that we don't see and that we don't understand well, because that we're not in relationship <laughs> to our knowledge and education is limited. Well, exactly, and yeah. that's the point of it. So what I'm saying is, a lot of people like to point at these experiments and say, "See, that's you know, that's why telepathy or something doesn't work because someone is offering that money and blah blah blah." But I know for you know for myself that like you know I usually only get the information. For example, I did a healing for somebody the other day. I set, I put my hands on them, and uh, as I as they just laid there, just I, I told them to just drift, go think of it, whatever. I put my hands on them, and I kept seeing all these black horses just running, like all these running horses. And after the healing, I had asked her, um, what's your relationship to horses? And she had said, oh, my God, you know, horses are like the only thing that make me feel alive and free. And I haven't done it in like a couple of years. And I've been thinking about doing it, but I've been, you know, putting it, you know. And the reason why you get that is and the reason why magic is real is because it's hyperdimensional physics. And the only way that this can work, that you can shoot through these wormholes into all these alternate universes that exist beyond space and time is if you have the right intention and then it's a creative flow of feeling your way through these qualities and understanding your own unique relationship to reality so you can pick up on that so for me it's pictures and feeling more often these days right but other people have other ways of doing it too but i can't imagine that if if i'm in alignment like i I can't i can't just do psychic shit I have to really have like a good intention or something, you know, and then I get the information that's necessary. So I'm, I, you can't show off. It's like built into this system somehow. And so, you know, I just wanted to shed some more light on, you know, the, Dave, what I, I really believe that the stuff that you're talking about is just 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 a little bit. It doesn't include all the dimensions, and I can't fucking nail it yet. Well, I believe that the flat Earth includes all the dimensions. I believe, <laughs> I, I, I believe that there's, there's stuff there's stuff below the Earth plane. Like, like it's a lot easier to believe than on a on a on a globe because you know we have a whole the whole globe makeup doesn't make any sense. But could there be planes of existence ab- below us? Could there be planes of existence above us, above the dome or the firmament? Um, you know, NASA it has been responding. So you think there's people below us, like whole um, civilization? I, I, I think that we could be stacked up on layer upon layer of civilizations. What do they I, think? I, I don't know. You know, if, if I had to pick one, I'd go for the endless plane with the puddle theory that we've we've talked about in the past. But, for a moment, for the moment. Yeah, for the moment. That could change. But all I know now is the reality that we live in, and there appears to be some sort of dome, and NASA has been responding to all of this flat Earth stuff where they've been putting out more and more stuff. They release these ridiculous pictures of, of the Earth, supposedly. Um, but they put out an article just yesterday that said, uh, which is a week ago, um, that uh, they found a, a, an invisible 
um, shield that's over that's like 7,000 miles over the earth that protects us from incoming radiation and, and, and particles and whatnot. And they're basically saying it's like a glass dome or some sort of energetic dome. They're not necessarily, they, they're hedging on what they're saying, but they're basically programming everybody to the reality of the dome. So mm-hmm. when this comes, goes mainstream, people are like, oh yeah, you know, NASA said that, you know, I, I, they've known it. Jim Carrey was in on it from the beginning, Absolutely. man. <laughs> <laughs> so we just got to crash a boat into that shit. He probably has all of these pictures on his desk of him in crosshairs right, right. now. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> he's just as warm as Wolfgang. Doug Petrie is just as warm. You know, because he they had him. I've told this story on the show before. Um, then Dave and Mike, maybe you could tell your Syracuse story again. But they had the, um, <laughs> Tom. Sh- I've, I've, no, I've told the story. Tom Shadyak, who wrote the, uh, the he, he did the movie. Yeah, he had the I happy. Am. Yeah, or, no, no, I, I am. am. Yeah, which yeah. is so good. I actually just watched it again the other day. I always get something new out of it. Um, and then he had like these these people were at, over in Alaska where they were uh, filming. They ran out of food and water. They were stranded. Like there wasn't like a crazy emergency, but you know, in a couple of days they're going to run out of water, so they were having someone drop stuff off to them. Right. And so they just recruited Jim Carrey to do it. So like here, the, these people are sitting there, you know, and like stranded. And here comes the helicopter, and and a guy hops out, and he's got two jugs or whatever. He comes running over, and he goes, "Here's your food," you know. And he goes, "Tom Hanks will be back with the <laughs> <laughs> Hops in the helicopter. After it flies away. <laughs> you know, people are that's like, hilar- what the fuck? That's hilarious. Tom Hanks will be back. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. So funny. So I, let me finally get to the, the Mars thing. So I was listening to this guy, Anthony Patch, who's, you know, I'm actually, it's funny, I'm on board with him because he, he really talks about how... Um, this is the guy that bombed on TV? He's, no, no, that was, that was James Von Prowse. Oh, okay. So I was saying, it's like, you know, that, that fan was sent me that clip to kind of be like, hey, dude, you know, what you're exploring is kind of bullshit. He's a skeptic. Sure. But he's one of the guys, actually, who we hold, we totally respect each other, and he just does not agree with literally anything that I say. It's yeah. like my relationship to yeah. Dave, not it's vice really versa. And, it, I, and I hold, you know, <laughs> I just, I hold it. And like, I, it does, like at times it annoys me, at times it doesn't, whatever, but it allows me to just relax. You know what I mean? It's, yeah, good, yeah. it's good work, dude. This is good spiritual practice, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so this guy, Anthony Patch, who really feels like he's surrendered to God and God is using him, uh, working through him in order for him to kind of figure out what's going on with CERN um, and what's going on with the Human Genome Project, when they're, um, I mentioned last episode, the universe is built on language. Well, um, the D- our DNA has a language to it as well, and we can decode that or encode that into ones and zeros, mm. and that ones and zeros can ex- essentially give you um, a human life form if you have the correct organic building blocks, right? So now here's the interesting thing. The Human Genome Project has already encoded this, we already have something the size of a microchip that can build these sorts of things. And Mars, uh, whether it's a wandering star in the return of the gods or not, <laughs> if you can hold this one possibility that Mars is, you know, as somewhat as we think it is, mm-hmm. that we can send something there, then it is very likely that we already have sent something there. And we may very well be growing humans over there nice. in addition to anything else. And uh, this is totally possible. Now, it gets even more interesting when Anthony Patch points out that we really don't know what's going to happen with CERN when we turn it up all the way. And the reason why CERN is connected to the Human Genome Project lies along some uh, some company in in California. He can't name it because every time he names the company, Men in Black show up and they're like, nah, that's it, you're done. So he's like, all right, I can't name this company anymore. But if you look up like Human Longevity Project California, they'll come up, right? Apparently, that's okay. Okay. So. So he's digging into CERN and what he he believes CERN is doing is CERN is opening up a portal to another dimension, which I, is possible with your consciousness. Why not with a machine if you're starting to work in small and un- small enough stuff? And he believes that they are transferring this encoded information into and out of other dimensions, and that is how they are going to sort of grow other kinds of beings here. And and they think actually that this goes on. What a, is the motive to grow other kinds of beings? Same here? reason why Dave channels the sixth dimensional demons to promote his flat Earth power. You know, it's just power, dude. It's just, oh, just people that would work for them? It's just like a negotiating... Pro- they're just communicating with these beings, and now they're finally building the, the doorway to open up like the gates of hell. But we're already so overpopulated. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're like popcorn. We're like popcorn to them. 
Num, 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 num. I just I just find it interesting. You know, it's just it, you know it's very far out stuff. Sure. But um, with the times that we're entering, I, I do believe that uh, things are going to get weird, man. So so since you're still believing that Mars is a planetoid circle rock in I space, hold, I hold that belief. Yeah, that, that, that's fine. That's fine. My my question is, it never never made sense to me that all of the planets are on the same plane that that are coming around the sun, including the Earth. They They're all, not. That's when you're looking at a two dimensional representation of something that is far from too right big. but you're seeing it spinning through space but they're all on the on the on the same plane the, uh, so they're all on the not, same not, slice not but the same plane they're in relationship right. with each other but, and a holographically constantly evolving relationship right and they're but they they're not crisscrossing each other at right angles neither are we when we walk out right. the door but that never <laughs> made sense to me like if you look at you know the, what an atom looks like the the electrons are flying and crisscrossing and making a, a grid all the way around it but everything is coming in everything is coming in on a flat plane that's because it's going over the flat plane. Here's something. No meteor, you know, we see meteor showers, never goes up. They all come down. But if meteor showers were real, we'd see them shooting up from the horizon into the sky, but it never happens. They go across and down only. I, I can't say yes or no well, to that. I mean, just... No, find proof that that's not the case, but that is the case. All right, I'll ride a meteor tonight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and they all go down because the Earth is a plane and does not move. All right, move along. Well, speaking of that, Mike, I visited you and Nicole in a dream the other night. What the fuck, um, dude? Yeah, it was interesting because Nicole was looking. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I was I was standing outside. Like I went to one of those places. I I'm, I know you guys have this where you you know you've been there before. You visit it all the time in your dreams. Right. I'm with all my dream people and my dream friends who are like I'm like God. I know you. You know what is this? You know. And I look out into the water and I see a witch on a broom flying around the water. Like and I'm like, oh man, I forgot you could do this you know so i become loose in the dream i'm like here we go i'm looking around for a broomstick i can't find anything i finally find this like shitty piece of wood and i'm like good enough throw it between my legs and take off dude i visited you and nicole man and it was so fun i went up to the window i knocked it you let it open it was like a whole just the curtains blew back dude, tim so, comes dude, in so... look at my log yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just break it throw it in the fireplace <laughs> I don't know. I just thought if you, you know, if that ch jogged any memory or something, it was a really important dream for me. I don't think I, I had flew it. a no. stick to you and Nicole. That's the pretty city. hilarious. It was so awesome, man. It was so awesome. <laughs> Felt the wind through my hair and stuff. It was so great. All right. <laughs> now I can cross that off my list. Uh, anonymous and KKK. Yes. How about yeah. that? That yeah. story. All right. Let me let me uh, get to it here. <laughs> you want to, you I have it on time? my phone. Oh, okay. Several <laughs> prominent U.S. senators and mayors have been outed as members of the Ku Klux Klan and other racist groups by the hacktivist collective Anonymous. Mm -hmm. So these are the guys. <laughs> For uh, Anonymous, the U.S. Senators, Tom Tillis, a Republican from, from North Carolina, John Cornyn, a Republican from Texas, Dan Coates, a Republican from Indiana, and Johnny Essexon, a Republican from Georgia. <laughs> sounds now, like a Democratic Anonymous. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, what one of those states is the most shocking? <laughs> what one? Because uh, I, yeah, not at all. Uh, several mayors of major U.S. cities, including Madeline Ruggiero of Knoxville, Tennessee, mm. Jim Gray of Lexington, Kentucky, <laughs> Paul D. Frame of Norfolk, Virginia, Virginia, Kent Gwynn of Acala, Florida, and Tom Henry of Fort Wayne. Dude, this is pretty Imagine ridiculous. Imagine Indiana. I know. I just got fucking shot by a dart right there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you have a picture in you, of you in the crosshairs on your desk in the yeah, morning. Yeah, dude, the story is on U.S. Uncut if anybody wants to read more, but it basically they go background into how long they've been members and all this shit. Yeah. Now, it's, doesn't uh, this sound like wild. just a, uh, a, a plan to... Demonize the de to demonize the Republicans and get Hillary into office. It sure could, sure could be. Could yeah. be. We could hold that possibility. There are many possibilities, many dimensions sure. possible. Guys, still hoping Bernie. I like Bernie. <laughs> it's not yeah. gonna happen. I think he's gonna get assassinated. <laughs> but I love Bernie. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, have you guys heard of uh, the gold collared workers? New term that I want you to start integrating into your vocabulary system. Okay, these are the globalists that would use any nation state and let that nation state fall in order to capitalize upon it. They have no nation or sovereignty, no nation sovereignty, excuse me. <laughs> and, uh, you know, medicine for that. That's right. The Hopi Rainbow Warriors. 
That's what they said. <laughs> <laughs> right? Where they're looking at the comets going downstream only? Yeah. Oh, I just pulled up this. Uh, this is a brand new article, Tim, but they're talking about, finally, uh, mainstream-wise, about the hundreds of people missing, mostly around Yosemite and the national parks. Oh, finally. Some, national some, Park some Service some is, is covering some, it up. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm going there, by the way. I'm going to uh, a bunch of national parks in June, I think, of next year. So I'm going to hit up David Politis. I'm going to get the whole thing. I'm going to, like, I'm I'm legitimately nervous. After I have Ooh. all of his books. I've read them all. Dude, like, I, I the only thing, my only saving grace is, like, You know I, what you do? You bring, bring a couple bring, small children with you because then they'll dude, get I, got I, was gonna, I was going to say, <laughs> sit at the foot of the mountain and have a past life regression to back when you were four. Maybe you'll go missing. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to bring a lot of spiritual technology and try to sense my way through it. No joke. Like, I'm, I'm very excited for that. I hope you get eaten by a bear. <laughs> hey guys, don't ever forget, children are our most valuable resource. All right. That's what, that, that's what, that's what, that's what, that's what our politicians say. <laughs> wow. That, uh, yeah, yeah, Rothschild that just regurgitated that yeah. shit. Oh, my God. Jesus. That was scary. Okay, so peak oil websites are starting to disappear in the wake of new information leading and giving strength to the abiotic oil theory. What do you guys think about that? The fact that Makes oil more sense is, on a flat earth. is naturally made in the mantle of the earth and is not the result of, but may very well also be the result of, who knows, you know, but uh, saying not solely the result of dead fossils or dead Frank. <laughs> do people still believe, <laughs> do people still believe that uh, oil comes from dead dinosaurs? I think that's the, what the majority of the world thinks as well as money being wow. real and all that other stuff I, that's to nagging us I, this I, time. I need to get off. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Did you see that? Uh, speaking of NASA, Dave, they just uh, there was just a story that they saw something come out of a black hole for the first time. Ever. Of, course, yeah. of course they did. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think I, about that? I mean, anything NASA says is a lie. It's a fake agency. They've never been in space. And that's it. Every single thing they do is a fucking lie. Every picture they showed us is a Photoshop creation. There is no Hubble telescope. You know, you know, if you look at the space station, Wait, what telescope? The, the Hubble telescope, oh, Hubble. The, the space station is the this long, lanky thing. It's got panels and everything. It's in the thermosphere. The temperature ranges from, you know, 800 degrees to 2,700 degrees, where the metals that are made of would, would melt. It, there's, I, I think they probably took there's that There's micrometeorites in, like, millions a day. or, or it's the, the number per hour is, is insane that are going, you know, 20 times the speed of a bullet that will kill anybody up there. And, and and it's and it's got the gamma radiation. It's got you know extreme temperature variations, but nothing ever breaks. And if it does, I think they'll go out on a spacewalk and they can fix it with a screwdriver. It's ridiculous. It's the biggest joke. I mean, there, we can't have something like that last that long just sitting on the desert floor. It'll. It, it, they're up there. They're having. They're always. It's always party time in there. They're smiling, joking around. They haven't showered in months. They have fresh shirts. It's ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. I, I think we got it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, I, and I hold by my statement on freaking uh, cross the mouth. You're the dumbest fuck on the planet. <laughs> Oh, man. I got more stories. I don't want to hog it up, though, guys. No, go go for it. I don't know. Last, I was like, the one three that brought up the last three. Yeah. I don't know. Just, get, just uh, keep just, going. All right. So uh, more Linda Moulton Howe. Oh, before I forget, David, have I you? I reached out to Linda Moulton Howe. You did Howe. reach out yes, to her. Cool. I've got nothing yet. Yeah, you got nothing yet. But... I, got, I, I reached out with a very polite email, and I, and I was very careful on what I was saying, and I, and I just asked her uh, no that buzzwords. if we can talk. Well, I, you try to keep the words flat earth out of it because that's just an automatic shutdown. <laughs> he goes, Linda, have important stuff to tell you. <laughs> Contact immediately. <laughs> Dave. Sign Flat Earth. No, I, Earth. I, 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 I point out my uh, interview history <laughs> um, and, and some stuff I've done and, uh, you know, and I and I point out some things. And he includes a picture of himself wearing that shirt <laughs> <laughs> with the hair. Yeah. Did you, did you mention Don't to her? Don't call me a Jew, but go ahead. <laughs> did you mention? Don't call me a Jew. Go ahead. Did you mention Don't to her me that you're Jewish? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's, first of all, it's not at all where I was going with it. Uh, but I was going to say, did you mention to her that I am communicating with the council that she so often reports on of these higher spiritual uh, I did beings? not get to talk to her yet, so no, okay. I did not tell you her about you, the You got to drop the council. That's did you the first thing you got to do. Did you get tell her there? that Jedis are real and that's who I'm in communication with? I think, that, I think the mystics that I work with, she would very much like to talk to them. I think it would put a lot of shed a lot of light on her work, especially one of the hottest threads that she's on right now. It's actually fascinating. It's uh, she she's going to give a presentation at the what's the conference that's coming up? That's like free the, your mind, free, or? Not, not free your no. mind. 
I did my interview with Bob Tuskin, by the way. How'd very, it go? very interesting guy. I think I did really well. Yeah. He opened it up with, uh, you know, you're Rothschild. Tell me about that. And I was like, no relation to the blood drinking holographic reptiles. And he's like, oh, that's too bad. <laughs> <laughs> then we went um, out with the interview. And where can people see that? Talknetwork.com? Uh... No, no, that's that's Cosmic Perspective. Oh, okay. Thank you, Dave. But on the Free Your Mind Conference YouTube channel, they're going to be posting them soon. All and right. I'm going to go there. I'm, I'm sort of like, everyone's already booked at this point. If anybody drops off, I got in because, you know, I'm making some noise these days. Is that in Philly? Where is that? Yeah, it's in Philly. Nice. It's like in April, mid-April or something. Oh, Philly's like the home of the Illuminati. Dude, it's really <laughs> you ever seen that? Yeah. I sent you a picture of that Masonic temple. It's right. like the main first Masonic temple, and it is huge. They did a uh, presentation on that last year. Ross, Ross Buten, Buten, I can't tell if I'm mixing Ross him Buten? up with like, yeah, with Ross Buten, but it's somebody like that. Ross something. He gave, oh, cool. he, he gave, he gave, um, <laughs> yeah, I can't, you keep knocking me off my trail. <laughs> He gave a presentation basically explaining how Philadelphia is the gates to hell. Like, a, a <laughs> strong, strong presentation. You know? <laughs> Bob Duskin was like, maybe I won't have the conference here next year. It's a fun comedy city. It is. I, I love Philly. Philly's one yeah. of my favorite cities to go to. That's the Philly. Well, that that's I, because you're drawn to Satanism. That's well. I was going to say that's the <laughs> nice. city I go to when I break up with a girlfriend. I drive right to Philly, <laughs> and I come back like three days later just with, with stories to yeah, tell, just bite marks on your arm, stories, black to tell, eye, my friends. What do you got, Dave? You looked like you were about to coil and leap. Uh, there's so much. <laughs> there's just so much going on. Yeah. So, uh, so well, no, I got to tell my Linda Moulton House go, story. Tell still. your story, please. So she's speaking at this new conference. I think it's in Texas because I know Jay Dyer from Talk Network. He's speaking there on like Illuminati symbolism and cinema, but. I, I, you can't remember the name of it? God damn it. All right, so she's going to be talking about how alien software are triggered, like self-activating symbols that are actually uh, on all of these spacecraft. Mm-hmm. So going all the way back to, well, it would start in Rendlesham Forest. It actually started all the way in Roswell, but we'll get to that. In Rendles- Rendlesham <gasps> Forest is like England or Europe's version of Roswell. Basically, this guy, um, what's his name? Um, this, guy, this guy goes to... Um, he, he touch. He basically he's he's, on, he's in the military. He's with somebody else. He goes to explore some sort of crash landing or something that's going on, and he ends up like having all this missing time, right? And when he comes back, he starts to piece all these things together. Goes into hypnosis, and in hypnosis, he starts to decode a lot of stuff, right? And so what he's able to decode first of all is that J- Jim Pennison, that's his name, was that when he went there, he actually touched this alien craft that was there, mm. and when he touched it, he had all of these ones and zeros. Uh, be flashing through his mind and through hypnosis he was actually able to write down all the ones and zeros they decoded these ones and zeros Mm -hmm. and it said gave latitude and longitude points of where the aliens are and it said on the flat earth on the flat earth (laughs) and they said watch out for like the deceivers and serious and watch out for the palate like like palladians are cool serious no good right Uh, like we're just here to help we're waiting for you to be ready just keep doing what you're doing like 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 messages like, like like people are just decoding this guy saw ones and zeros flashing through his third eye and he's just like oh, I don't know what's going on here I'm just going to write it down and it turned out to be this stuff and it's the same stuff that Jesse Marcel started to pick up on back in Roswell with the self activating software so this in addition to all of these holographic aliens that seem to be flying out of people's chests and stuff these days on the massage table it's really leading Linda to think that we're, we're either entering a time right now that these things are becoming activated or for some reason and we're just catching on to it. But she says that these things are here and they're just like, they're getting turned on. They're like robots that like. So let, let me let me address that. Yeah. Uh, because when you say aliens, everyone thinks, oh, aliens coming from incomprehensible, you know, light years away. But when, when I, I say that all of that stuff is here local on the flat earth and when you say, well, what about the Palladians and what about the Saturnians or whatever? Uh, maybe perhaps mm-hmm. all of these energy lights in the sky are controlling all the different factors. Actions, you know, like maybe we are all Martians and Mars is the one that affects us. And, you know, and and uh, and and Sirius A and Sirius B are, are, are getting are, are are the ones that are energizing that are, you know, people are spiritually connected to that God or that, you know, entity. And but it's all here on Earth. You know, I, I don't think uh, an alien spacecraft is going to fly through all of the radiation and craziness out there to get here and then crash. Maybe yeah. if they're coming across the plane from 10,000 miles away. All of these theories, though, yeah. they will collapse if you move on from flat Earth. 
right? All of this is the na- the natural result of how you can piece the reality together from a flat earth perspective. But, but no, I'm saying from a flat earth perspective, it makes a million times more sense than from a global you know, sp- perspective without a space and, and, and whatnot. And that we're just, you know, the reason they want us to think we're a speck in the flying through the cosmos is to keep us away from from God, from from realizing that there is a creator and that we are spiritual beings that are meant to love each other and get along. And because if we all get along, they lose their power. But if we all fight and hoard and steal and uh, and are selfish, then they can control us because uh, we, we can never have the utopia. Okay. So last thing about the Linda Molnar stuff <laughs> is, is that uh, Lynn Buchanan, a remote viewer, a famous guy for, for doing that kind of stuff. And for anyone that doesn't know what remote viewing is, it's a way to project your consciousness into a specific target. Again, an intuitive way of going through enough wormholes in the Planck field that you land at the quality of what you're looking for. And he remote viewed one of the alien spaceships that was uh, in relationship to uh, this initial Rendlesham Forest uncovering. And what he found was uh, that the, this alien uh, ship was filled with life forms with self-activating symbolic technology to trigger itself when it found a correct environment in order to give life to this life form. So very similar to the Anthony Patch ideas that I was mentioning before. Mm-hmm. It appears as though aliens have already done this. Pretty, pretty freaking wild, man. <laughs> You know, <laughs> pretty wild. I, you know, I would think that we're doing it too, man. Many if, possibilities. If, yeah. There was definitely something else that I wanted to say, and I just lost it. That, I, that, I saw that yeah. happen. Yeah, that I was waiting for it. it. Yeah, it, 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 it was really exciting too. And I was just like, <laughs> "That's crazy, right?" <laughs> I was like, "Damn it!" Uh, do you have more stories, Dave? More current news? No, not not really. Uh, you know, the we were bombarded with chemtrails. Did anybody notice this week? It was crazy. No, I, I didn't leave you, the city. You didn't see my meme? Nothing. I saw him. <laughs> I'm throwing you some likes these days. All right, I'm thank trying. you. I'm trying. Um, it's just, it's unbelievable that people don't see it. You know, What's, is there anything new in the chemtrail field? Any new, like, you know, is, is there any new argument? Because all the old arguments are, are being consistently debated. Is there anything new? They're, they're, they're having more whistleblowers are coming out, more military people, you know, senators are, are starting to look into it and, and give it some attention. Okay. Uh, Dane Wigginton was at, uh, some, some, uh, big, uh, any, count, you know, anything new state meeting. The new, the new is that we're running out of time. They're fucking up the whole planet with this, and, uh, and geoengineering makes a hell of a lot more sense in an enclosed world. Now, I'm really curious about this because I've been just tossing it in my head back and forth a lot these days. It's that um, JFK was shot in the open in front of the world, and we've got some of the best researchers on it, and a lot of the information has already come out. But uh, still, even though you can prove it and blah, 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 all these different things— uh, nothing has happened, basically, right? right? Because uh, so, how is this any different than nine eleven, Boston, Boston the flat, flat Earth? The, how how is what any different? How how is the, you know chasing our tails? We're chasing their tails when we can't get the information, right? We can't get the information unless we they, we luck out or whatever. And even then. Right. The majority of the public needs the authority figures to in order to tell them because they don't have this internal courage. They haven't discovered that yet. You sure. know what I mean? Which I think is on a, a real, mass scale. I think that's really what the dance that we're doing right now is disclosure, the economy, this control system, the education, blah, blah, blah. All this stuff is reality trying to tell us to, to, to you know, in solidarity, embrace our own courage. You know, nature loves courage. It's, it's trying to teach us to trust our internal barometer and embrace true humanity what if what if this whole flat earth thing was planned to come out at this time by for lack of a better word god um (laughs) because god cannot reveal himself to us so what if he showed us something that would make you realize there is a god that is the flat earth but, it, but there, God, is, but, there is no debating a belief, though, dude. You can bring up as right. much as, as many yeah, counterpoints it, or anything like that. I'm not counterpointing. It, it, no, I know, but it it just it, it's difference of opinion. But it's still like this is like a full blown at this point a religion. Like well, the way you it, speak about it too. Yeah, no, no, no. Is the, 100%. the whole, the whole yeah, thing. For sure. I'm yeah. sitting here listening, and it's yeah. like I no, mean, no, I, I've never I've been an atheist like my entire life. But if you look at what it is, it's built by intelligence. I believe that this fake alien invasion, they're going to introduce us to some fucking hybrid that they made underground and they're going to claim that they built the dome 
that okay. they're here and they are our rulers. And here goes, here goes the one world government. I mean, it, there's a million possibilities, but they're fucking with us. You know, but it's it's a little bit. It's sli- I do think it's a actually that slope. that NASA is very aware of its detractors of conspiracy theorists, and I do think that they have a sense of humor and they purposefully fuck with them. <laughs> uh, no, for sure, I definitely think about that all the time. Like even if, it, regardless, if they're doing it while also fucking with everyone, it doesn't matter. But they are doing winks and nods oh, to absolutely. conspiracy theorists yeah, no, no, all they're, the they're, time. But everything they produce is fake. Everything. No, without that's exception. That's fine. It, it doesn't change what I yeah. said. Yeah, you're talking about the people <laughs> that are working for these institutions yeah, like that like, are like They're us. giving a little fuck you if, to if, them. No, for they're sure. laughing. Yeah, they're yeah. high-fiving each other. You yeah. see those fucking morons? Like, they believe that I'll... Pluto has a shape, uh, has an outline of Pluto on it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not. But it's not just that. I think a lot of their specific winks are to conspiracy theorists, especially like you mean independent researchers. Yes. Well, okay. you you all don't all you don't all fall under that umbrella. You know what? There's a lot of people out there uh, in the flat Earth and other conspiracies that are fucking nut jobs, right? There, there's people out there on Wall Street that are nut jobs. It Most, doesn't mean no, all of them. Yeah, they're all nut jobs. Yeah. What I'm, every single thing that anyone pays attention to, there's nut jobs involved. So you have to. Look and see what's real and what's not real and weed out. But I love people that say, you know, know, it's on YouTube. It's all bullshit. No, everything's on YouTube. Yeah. I don't don't subscribe to that. I make fun of the uh, that we're going to start the first ever YouTube accredited university. I love that. (laughs) Come on. All things taught me a YouTube video. YouTube University is probably better than any school out there because you can get (laughs) you can get uh, every. The, every subject taught to you in a hundred different ways, and whatever works for you is great. Hey, my uh, that how to tie a tie video was a real Dude. father for an <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> hey, every time I go to a wedding, I need to tie a bow tie. I break out that video. <laughs> hey, Mike, why are you hugging the computer? <laughs> <laughs> Just a little, oh it. man, wait, why are you pouring alcohol on the computer? <laughs> what? I don't know. Right. I was like, I was like, that take it too far. Um, okay, so uh, we could finish up the Susan Cornicky talk. You know, she was, um, Suey. she was, a, she, I think she was director of the Residence Project Foundation, um, which is what I'm in with Nassim Haramein and all that stuff. And she recently, uh, parted ways with them for reasons that I can't say. Uh, but come on, uh, tell us, uh, come on, the, the, no, the yeah, gossip this is, minute. This is, this is gossip, the, minute. The gossip minute. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. I have too much know, integrity. But you know so much backstory. How about backstory? an unnamed person that was with an unnamed off uh, uh, scientist? Oh, she fucked everyone. So she why, liked Nassim, why, why, why but he liked un, her sister. unnamed person leave? <laughs> so she went through some stuff. She had to go through a shift. But, dude, last did, night. Did Cosby? She did not get caught. Nassim, Nassim gave her a strong cappuccino. Yeah, she, he's like, you fell into a black hole last night, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I saw something come out of that black hole. <laughs> so she had a... Um, <laughs> I, I, I interviewed her um, today, which is actually last week now, and she was like, yeah, I'm a little tired today. You know, I had an extraterrestrial encounter uh, last night. And what happened with her was she was cooking dinner and she felt like all this stuff start to light up in her body and she was starting to like get tuned in with something and she didn't know what was going on. So uh, she had this impulse to walk outside. And when she walked outside and looked up, there it was a giant craft. You know, I never got the chance to ask her what it looked like because I wanted to be like, me too. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and but I didn't get a chance to because we went on to other things. But what happened this time How's that was not your go to question. What I saw a huge craft. What does it look well, like? Because she started, she moved right into this, and and she was talking about how this this new way that her body was tuning into the craft allowed her to just somehow know that she was going to start channeling information from them. So she called a friend out of the house and said. I'm just going to start talking and you listen, right? And so she did it, whatever. And she didn't release what she said yet, whatever. Um, But I just find that really, really interesting because this happened right as she had a big shift with the Residence Project Foundation. They moved from Hawaii to California. It's like a whole big thing. And they're leading the unified physics, like spearheaded campaign to, you know, reunite the world. So it's a really big thing that she was at from the beginning. And now that she had this big shift, there was an opening, which I always say that's how all this stuff, interdimensional, spooky stuff happens. There's always an opening. And then she starts channeling aliens. You know what I mean? I'm like, it's, it, you know, this is a really smart, like, well-researched, 
you know, seems like a very grounded, down to earth person, you know, is channeling aliens now. She was hot? the director, you know, I just think that this stuff is, uh, yes, she's uh, absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. There seems to be a, a cor- correlation. Well, they say, what's the alien race that's like super hot that's here? The, the Nordics. Nordics? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's how you know it's real. We both said it for sure. They're like just the hunkiest guys. Come on. Oh, man. I agree. All right. So I just want to remind everybody Dr. Rich and Alan Miller really thinks we're going to have, really thinks that we're going to have like a day after tomorrow type scenario in 2017. He he was said he was coming out with some spiritual stuff this week. Yeah. He's, you know, he's He's coming out like metaphysical. Like he's going to explain a whole new reality, which will be right up your alley. Yeah. Well, well, he took mystery schools. He's the the guy. Like when when we talk, I'm like, dude, hold. Netzak, you sold foundation in Malkut. He's like, that's what I'm talking about. I'm like, you sound I'm like, give me, I'm like, you sound like you're spirits. in Star Wars. Yeah, dude. I think I'm, I did I think that on that's... purpose, you fucking idiot. Oh, okay, well, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, Jesus Christ. I think that's what I'm moving into, the new reality. That's why the movie's like, they're real. I'm like, yeah, no shit. I think he just learned Klingon. So Susan Cornicky, she also confirmed for me that without a shadow of a doubt at the re- uh, actually I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say where <laughs> at the residence at the residence uh. at the residence of I'm not gonna say where uh, they for sure have free energy devices like they they already know how to do it it's a done deal the issue is we're waiting for the sriantra to come right now the masculine energy and I the feminine energy which by the way is in everybody the the goal here is to become androgynous beings on the inside and have that reflect on the outside while you can still be male or female on the inside is what matters when these two are in relationship and out in the world then this energy is going to be released you know as a part of you know god showing up and revealing himself to you that kind of thing you know god's wearing a trench coat and got a big old dick he's about to show us <laughs> i don't know god's i don't know how, himself how do us. i yeah how do i go yeah, what do i do yeah, about what do you do with that <laughs> Plenty. Man, you could have kept going yeah. on with the riff for one. <laughs> I don't know, man. Because at any speck of imagination, I, I pictured God, this translucent blue and purple being wearing a real trench coat and just being like, almost like uh, Mr. What was that? Mr. New York or something like that? The big blue guy with the big dick? The video? The Marvel? Marvel? That's not yeah. Marvel. That's uh, that's the Watchman. That's the Watchman. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> you got the big blue dick. Yeah. Yeah. That's my God. Yeah. He's uh, he's on the side of life, and he has no problem saying that. He's just like me. So uh, moving on. <laughs> I've been listening to a lot of Carolyn Mace. You guys know who Carolyn Mace is really big time spiritual yeah, teacher. I know Carolyn. She talks. Yeah, she's my favorite. <laughs> she talks about sacred contracts, right? So basically, before you come into this lifetime, you and your soul family, which is like the you know the overall quality of everything that you're working with, uh, it separates and drops into different avatars as you, Dave, whatever, um, that, that's just how it works, right? And before, while we're all together, we all develop uh, certain game plans, you know, and there's different exit points that you can put in the game plan if the soul thinks it can't complete its journey and wants to exit, and there's different times that different people are going to come into your life. And she basically teaches how to interpret how your body lights up when you actually meet one of these people and how to decide whether or not you're supposed to work with them or not, because right. there's a perspective that you can take where the body knows just because the soul and there is activating it. It says this is the person that you want to start working with or not. Well, right? the weird thing is, is people can differentiate the feelings, but they choose to work against it because their brain rationalizes themselves yeah, out of trusting I've, it. I've worked through this before. No, now, all the time, dude. I've, 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 I've met people immediately and been like, this guy's interesting, but knowing that they're a fucking nightmare. Yeah. Just like, hey, two month friendship. Oh, okay. <laughs> saw that through. <laughs> why, why, why do I keep teaching myself yeah, these lessons? I know, Are these relationships built, built on uh, pre existing Existence contracts. Yes, okay. this is this is in between lives, life between lives. That's what I was supposed to do with Rachel D'Alto, but instead we did a healing around my sinus infection because I was sick. But next week I'm going to get the life between lives and figure out what I was before I came in here. Now that we had that you psychedelic girl. trip, I don't care if I was or not. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I, I hope I, I was a girl. Bang you like a guy right now, though. <laughs> <laughs> So I just thought it was interesting that um, for sure, with his free uh, energy behind, b- before we came into this <laughs> lifetime, us three for sure decided to do this. For sure. Did what? we even know what a podcast was when that happened? Because it didn't exist. I don't know how before before we came here. You're looking at time linearly, bro. Oh, bro. thank you. <laughs> oh, Mike, there you go. You, I, You're speaking enough, my language. Said, catch me at the Congress Hotel. I feel Miami. like I have a cup full of sand in my mouth right now. <laughs> <laughs> from the lollipop. <laughs> from every pop. <laughs> from from the lolly. Hey, check out Ball Earth Skeptic, um, and check out. 
flat earth and other hot potatoes if you want to see a, a flavoring of who's out there in the flat earth field on YouTube. And if you're brand new to the flat earth and you don't know where to go and you're afraid to go to my website because it's too scary, deep inside the rabbit hole dot com, ch- just search for flat earth clues on YouTube. Flat earth clues. Mike? Follow me on Twitter at I am Mike Cannon, and uh, yeah, that's it. Well, go to thethirdthing.net, thethirdthingnetwork.com, or if you're going to go shopping for the holidays, you should visit the cosmic.talknetwork.com <laughs> store because I get 12% of that. And we're listener supported, so support the cosmic or cosmic? Cos- cosmic.talknetwork.com. Okay. Mike Adams checks for all the pesticides, aluminums, all that stuff in his mad scientist laboratory. So honestly, if you're going to do it, I used to buy from there all the time. Now I have Mike not send it to me for free, even though I keep asking him to. They, He's like, yeah, it's in the mail. They also should have uh, prepping supplies for you. any of you that have been listening long enough that know that you should be storing some storable foods yeah, sure. and, uh, and, and other stuff. Uh, they have lots of stuff there. Buy some fleshlights. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> you have that in your store, Fleshlights Mike? and fleshlights, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's something to fuck. You last know, thing, too, my goal is to have the T-shirts uh, ready ready for order and and on your doorstep for the holidays. So uh, Decomposing they should be Timmy, a, 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 class, a favorite Frank, for the holidays. Frank, <laughs> Frank, Frank, Timmy, wow. Frank. You, you just threatened my life. <laughs> <laughs> Decomposing Frank. So we're going to have, uh, by, the, by the time this comes out, they're going to be up up for sale. Cool. So, nice. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. And so, uh, uh, donate. Right? What is it, Shelby? Stand Up New York Labs. Stand Up New York Labs.com. Uh, click on Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole and then donate. Is that right? And God we got damn right. We got ten bucks already, so we got to split that three we ways. Did. Yeah, we did. But they want our like ten ninety nines. They want our yeah. social security. Yeah. I just told them no, it's not happening. <laughs> you said no, no, I said no. <laughs> All right, Tim and Tim and I will split that. Five 10. bucks, baby. Fuck yeah, it's, lunch. It's a blunt. <laughs> yeah, that is a blunt. All right, All right. Hey. later. Hey, hi. All right, hey.